And although we had plenty of money, there was nothing our money could buy. And the gods of the and the gods of the copybook headings said, "If you don't work, you die." That was Rudyard Kipling. Bjorn Lomborg, in this particular video, makes a very interesting point about that we do need to prioritize. I agree. However, that's a bit of a red herring uh, when he starts talking about, you know, uh, uh, when he when the first half of his lecture is talking about prioritization and about economists and the like. You know, we understand the need for prioritization. Cut to the chase. He later does in the later half of his video, uh, in this video, where he talks about uh, why climate change is down at the bottom of the list, uh, why AIDS is much more effect, uh, you know, why sanitation and the like they cost much more in terms of infrastructure. So why not spend as little as possible to get the, the maximum amount of gain return? What he's tending to forget is the fact that sometimes by solving one problem, you actually solve. If you do it in the right way, if you solve one problem, you can sometimes solve up to four or five. Example. Malaria, uh, one of the biggest issues is, uh, in treatment of malaria is the fact that, um, is the fact that you, uh, <coughs> excuse me, one of the biggest issues is that malaria, is, well, one of the science backgrounds is that malaria is caused by mosquitoes who absorb, uh, you know, who catch the virus, but a, lar uh, a large chunk of those mosquitoes breed in stagnant water, the, in stagnant, untreated water. With cleaned water, with cleaned water and proper and decent sanitation, you will provide a breeding ground for mosquitoes, which cuts back the transmission factor by a severe amount. So yes, you could spend, uh, you could put malaria treatment on the highest priority of the list. However, while it is done, you should all, um, you shouldn't put uh, the san uh, sanitation treatment at the bottom of the list. It should be put down as number two be uh, beneath the. Uh, um, you know, you should be putting uh, you should be putting these short-term problems as down or second or third round the list, and put the sanitation in, uh, uh, you know, or putting them as a separate subset to the uh, to the much larger problem. By solving the issues like global warming, sanitation, and stuff like that first, and spending as much money as you can on them now, you actually solve half the uh, uh, while doing the treatment as a supplement to them. You actually solve not only the issue of treatment or prevention uh, short term, you also solve the problem long term, which is where um, in, in economics, uh, in both micro and macro, the two biggest issues you have to deal with are not just upfront cost, but highest upfront cost for maximum return both in the, in the intermediate and in the long term on profit. Now let me uh, run through a couple of scenarios here which, the, uh, which Bjorn Lombard failed, uh, uh, failed to address um, and the Co Copenhagen consensus failed to address. Um, in dealing with issues such as climate change and global warming. Number one, with climate change and global warming, uh, the first thing is that, yes, they say that, the, that everybody will be richer. However, he's failed to uh, take a look into the account about resources which, money is which, uh, which the money has to buy, namely food. The problem is, though, is that without, uh, is that we, yes, we are already dealing with starvation, but consider the fact that large chunks of the third world, especially Bangladesh, Africa, and the like, most of the fertile ground which is necessary, you know, in order to even be able to grow the food necessary to, uh, you know, to be able to support more, most of those people, are on low-level ground on sea level. The worst, per, the worst climate scenarios which they're talking about are flooding large chunks of the, uh, our large chunks of the land. So it's not that we're helping some rich guy, it's that we're helping some rich guy down the line um, be able to maintain his food supply. Yes, they may be rich, but the money won't mean a damn thing if there is no food to buy. So we need to deal with, so dealing with food supply is one of the other major issues. On a short-term use, there is a much more effective reason for dealing with, uh, for dealing with um, uh, changing to alternative energy. We don't need carbon tax. Yes, the Kyoto Protocol for dealing with uh, global warming is a probably not a very effective uh, issue. However, there are much more effective means, such as switching over to hydrogen fuel cell, alternate, uh, you know, and we're talking the, with some of the more workable designs recently, one of which has a contract uh, uh, for de development with the U.S. government, um, in addition to wind and solar power. We are already facing a, we are already facing a major rise, we have been facing major rise in gas prices. And the fact that oil has been has been constantly increasing, and in maybe a decade or so, might be actually increasing up to two hundred dollars a barrel. And that's not be, uh, and that's barring that whole barring the whole climate change issue. That's just simply due to the fact that the political climate, you know, that we're running out of oil, and that the political climate, in terms of uh, you know how we're interacting with uh, uh, with the Middle East, is not necessarily in its best. So oil prices, as well as food and everything else, have been going up. 
If we solve the problem by switching over to alternate energy fairly quickly, we can maintain our own energy supply. You know, we can maintain a much more effective energy supply, and we don't need to uh, worry about... Um, you know, and we don't need to be worried about paying through the teeth for food, etc. We can cut our own costs in a whole bunch of areas considerably. It also means that transport uh, to third world countries, uh, you know, uh, also manages to um, cut that area considerably. The next one, AIDS prevention, which was the uh, which was the one put up at the uh, at the major beginning of the list, um, uh, with uh, AIDS prevention. Yes, condom use would be extremely effective. We should be. Uh, you know, condoms are only like what, 10 cents to manufacture, maybe like 5 cents a condom to manufacture. Yes, we should be putting a large chunk of condoms out there. However, bear in mind that the average, bear in mind that in the large chunk of these areas, particularly Africa, bear in mind that, uh, bear in mind that in Africa, Asia, and a large chunk of other areas, even if we make all these condoms and distribute them, people might not necessarily know how to use them. Condoms come with instruction, uh, half the time often come with instruction packs as to how to be able to use them. And if you're dealing with an uneducated populace, it's like the same uh, issue as where Nestle tried to provide uh, the milk cartons to uh, uh, to um, to people in certain areas in Africa, and the uh, and unfortunately there were some uh, severe cases of uh, of children who became undernourished because the mothers could not read the instructions on how to be able to properly prepare the baby formulas. So, first and foremost, infrastructure should be put in first with the others, such as condom use, a separate. Uh, 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 um, you know, at, at the very least, uh, some form of proper sanitation and education should become highest on the priority. Education should become highest on the priority, and then a, uh, you know, a, uh, education switching to alternative energies to uh, to cut for transport uh, and to cut you know the cut the cost of transport of all these uh, other things that are on the list. You know, switching to alternative energy, not just for global warming, but for other reasons such as the uh, the massive hikes on oil prices that we've been suffering. Um, and uh, you know sanitation, uh, sanitation to uh, provide a uh, you know to, uh, to to cut the uh, you know to cut the uh, the numbers of infection rates of malaria by cutting the uh, the areas for mosquitoes to breed in, um, you know cutting those issues should be top number three. And then as close adjunct supplements to solve the other problems, manufacturing of condoms, biotechnology and food. So this way we can increase the yield of existing uh, uh, you know so this way we can increase the yield. Of, uh, of farming uh, areas, so this way, in case when glo if and when global war you know this way when the climate change issue comes you know when the effects start happening and we start having some of the agricultural land flooded out we'll still be able to we'll still be able to uh, at least provide much more food um, thanks to uh, increasing yield of already existing uh, uh, food crops and uh, and after that, then we start dealing with malaria treatment and other stuff like that because of the fact that the, the other issues, particularly in relation to uh, education at the, at the top, alternative energy being second and sanitation being third, with uh, condom manufacturing and other issues being uh, close seconds, but are, but, are, but are considered a subset, you know, are considered a, uh, like, say, for example, the condom usage. Um, could be considered a subset of the education. You know, it should be one of the things that we're uh, that we're dealing with at the same time. Um, and free trade being a you know free trade being even higher than the condom usage. Uh, you know, being well, what was free uh, and and I mean actual free trade. I'm not talking sweatshops. I'm not talking uh, you know I'm not talking these stupid regulations. Uh, I'm not talking totalitarian dictatorships, which allow for uh, you know cheapest to get a buck back. Um, what we have right now is not free trade. We have mercantilism right now. And, uh, you know, the free trade agreements that we have for Canada and the United States right now don't cut it. They don't cut actual free trade. You know, uh, free trade should be a, uh, you know, we, we do need some degree of, uh, of regulate. Uh, what we need is we need a, a, a enough regulation to make sure that an actual free trade system is happening and that we're not getting another monopoly. <laughs> Remember, as Adam Smith said, a capitalist system abhors a monopoly. Anyway. That's neither here nor there, but you get the idea. Education and alternative education, alternative energy, and uh, you know, uh, education, alternative energy, and infrastructure should be the top three. With every with every one of those other priorities being a subset, not being bottom down the list. So this way, like, oh, we can't solve those. What we need to do is we need to put those as a subset of each and find more effective ways of cover of killing two birds with one stone. Often there are technical, often there are technical solutions which can be applied, which can actually which can actually solve multiple problems simultaneously. What we need to be doing is, yes, the economists are right that we need to be dealing with some of these higher priorities, but the economists are not the ones who need to be working this. Upfront costs do not necessarily mean that it's automatically a better solution. What we need is we need technical experts working in conjunction with economists to be able to figure out. How do we spend the least money possible on the best solution which covers as many problems as possible simultaneously? 
Um, he's wrong about the idea that we uh, that in an ideal world we could solve all problems, but we can't. What we can do, however, is that some solutions can solve multiple problems simultaneously. Toodles.